All right, welcome back or welcome to, I don't know what you use, but welcome back to SVK Network. Today we're talking summer cocktails with Farrah Lee and Brenda and the legendary, see, I'm really nice to you, P.O. The legendary yeah. mixologist. You're like the mixologist of Canada. Have you got the title yet? Not Have you gotten that title yet? Work, working on it. We got to get him a little title, a little belt. Says that. Belt. <laughs> I like that you, idea. Get you a belt. Get you a belt. Well, first of all, thank you both for joining us and being on the show today. And uh, we are talking. What are we talking about today, Brenda? We're talking about some uh, summer cocktails and things that are refreshing and coming into this finally nice weather and warm weather and stuff. And uh, the tropical pina colada is our uh, topic of conversation today, along with our fairly lime juice. So P.O.'s mixed up some stuff. It's all surprise to me. I have no idea what he's showing today. So we're going to be educated P.O. style. Yeah. So P.O., you're going to do just like a regular pina colada 1980 style? Yes, I'll start with it, with a little <laughs> twist in it, though. <laughs> I've been trying to make twist on the pina colada, which is, like you said, a classic cocktail from the 90s, but uh, it's it's doing a comeback, the pina colada, because Seriously? pineapple... Oh, yeah, definitely. Pineapple is an ingredient that surprisingly fits with so many flavor profiles. So this is like a canvas to start with, and then you go in all these directions. And this is what I'm going to try to showcase to you today uh, starting with the pineapple with the pina colada flavor and going a lot in a lot different directions so you can try this uh, at home or in your restaurants and try uh, these uh, different recipes for summer cocktail very cool and brenda are you gonna do the song am i doing the song oh yeah <laughs> i will not sing i will no? not okay. do that to myself no <laughs> All right. Well, let, you know what? We're going to break for a quick commercial because that's what we do here. Yeah. Um, and then we're going to come back and then, P.O., you're going to get into the – I got the Pina Colada song going. I like your shirt, by the way. It's pretty cool, actually. Thanks, man. Yeah. If you're just listening to this, he's wearing a cool shirt. Check it out on <laughs> video. There you go. All right. We'll be right back after this. It's not about turning on the lights, starting the grill, and prepping the food. You put on an apron, flip the open sign, and ready for the day. Regulars sit at the same spot and tell stories that bring smiles. Some days can be chaos, challenging. You persevere because you have an undaunted passion, a calling to make people feel welcome and warm. Guests come and go, some you may never see again. The restaurant business is heaven and hell. It's laughter and tears, forever changing and extremely challenging. When the day is done, feeling exhausted, Yet somehow content, you smile, knowing tomorrow you get to do it all again. And you wouldn't change a thing. There you go. Welcome back. <laughs> P.O., I'm going to let you just go for it. I'm not going to interrupt. I'm going to just watch you do your thing. All right. Let's go. So the pina colada is a very simple cocktail that you all can make at home with rum, with uh, pineapple juice and coconut milk. So you mix these ingredients. If, you're not, if not, you can use the coconut water and add some cream in it. And that's going to make the pina colada as well. So the flavor that are mixed together are coconut, pineapple, and rum. Us, we're going to make it mocktail, so without alcohol. And we're going to use the pina colada fairly mixed, which you got all these flavors already there. But I'm going to add another flavor to compensate the flavor of the rum that we are not putting it today. So these are going to be mocktails. And the fir first one, since we are in summer cocktails, I put the hat, I put the shirt. It's hot outside here in Montreal. So I'm going to make a slushy cocktail and have different flavors. And right away, you're going to see where we can go using pineapple. So coconut can bring you in a lot of directions, but pineapple really is a basic ingredient that has so many flavor profile that can fit with it. So I start with this uh, pina colada mix. It is so frozen, so you have to freeze it and then you use it directly for your mix. And I put in every cocktail, I put two ounces of this one. And I have made a 
infusion. It's like a tea, but I use citronelle. Okay, so this is lemongrass. Citronelle is in French, it's lemongrass. Mm -hmm. I put a lot in it in hot water and I let it sit there for an hour or two. And then it makes it's like a tea, and I use that instead of the rum. So lemongrass will bring acidity. It's going to bring the lemon taste of it. That is a flavor profile that fits perfectly with pineapple and with coconut. So that I'm going P. to o. use. Yeah. P.O., can we get a close-up of the lemongrass? So yeah. what, what's it What's it in again? Just some hot that's water. It. That's hot water. That's it. Yeah, that's it. So like, be curious. Use some ingredients and extract the flavor. And then with these flavors, you can make cocktails with or without alcohol. So for me today was lemongrass. How can I extract lemongrass? I could have bottled it. I could have toast it and dry it. And now what I decided is to infuse it right away. So not, not uh, boil it, just to infuse it like it's in hot water. And the smell of it is really intense. And I put a lot, like in uh, approximately uh, two cup of water, I put like um, 10 full stick of lemongrass. So what we want when we use these flavors at the beginning is to extract very strong flavor. Using these, you can put a little bit more, a little bit less, but you really want the flavor of the lemongrass to be present. It's got, that's going to be the same with the two other cocktails, with other flavors that I have used to replace my spirit. Because in this show, we are making mocktails. So when you're making mocktails, it's not just about taking off the alcohol and putting the same ingredients. You need to replace the alcohol with something else. So now with this lemongrass infusion, this is what is replacing the rum. This is not sweet. This is more uh, flavorful, flavorful and uh, acidic, but this is not sweet because I already put the pina colada mix, which is sweet. So this is really just a tea. So I'm gonna put the lemongrass, another one ounce and a half of this mix. So I have one ounce and a half of lemongrass tea, and I have two ounce of the pina colada fairly mixed. Then I'm gonna add approximately half a cup of ice in my magic bullet cup. So <laughs> you're probably wondering why I'm using a magic bullet cup instead of a shaker is because I want to make the slushy cocktail and this to work well, you need to first don't put too much ice and then you turn it properly, you shake it a little bit, you give it a first break of the ice and then quickly you put it under magic bullet. Just like that. So, sorry for the uh, noise, but we have the nice <laughs> slushy so pina colada in what, 10 seconds with the magic bullet. Then, the way I'm going to serve this is where the show happens. So, so far, it's very simple. Pina colada mix and lemongrass tea. But I'm going to use a nice, beautiful coupette here. And I'm going to put this slushy pina colada lemongrass um, cocktail slushy here in it. So it's so 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 PO, it's still got chunks in it though, right? They still have chunks in it. Yeah, that's why I'm gonna serve it with a spoon. If you use it a little bit more with the magic bullet, you can make it more homogenic okay. and without chunks, but I wanted to cut it before. I like the you chunks guys... though. I like the chunks though. It's not too bad. Uh, small chunks is not too bad. Personally, mm -hmm. I like it more homogenic emo without chunks, but uh, you just need to leave it a little bit more on the magic. Oh, color. Okay. So because of the TV and we are filmed and the sound. It was somewhat magic. It was somewhat yeah. magical. Somewhat magic. But anyway, I'm going to put <laughs> a little spoon here in it to go get these chunks. And basil. I'm going to use fresh basil that I'm going to put on it. Now, why basil? Why basil? Why, why, why basil? because basil is a flavor that complements very well with pineapple. So mm. like mm. many other flavor, you'll see basil is one of them. And then another mix that you can use with basil is different dry seeds like star anise and cardamom. And these, I'm going to simply use my microplane and put a little bit of this little powder on my slushy pina colada mix. This is what makes this cocktail unique and different is that the taste of cardamom is really strong so you just put a little bit with this uh, microplane and then the same with star anise so you have pineapple coconut basil that is there just as a garnish but the flavor the, the odor is there it smells and then you put cardamom and star anise on grounded this way not too much just a little bit so you can see the powder and 
Now, oh. you, can, you, can, you, can, you can put it as a garnish. This was exactly. <laughs> I didn't think to do that, but you know, it looks great. Priscilla, it's yours. <laughs> So there you go for the first uh, for the first pina colada, very simple, very good, love it. and uh, love it. yeah, it's a slushy cocktail summer. What would you what would you serve that with? You know, like for food wise, what would you do? Like a salad, fruit salad, tacos, uh, good... yeah, anything yeah, Mexican, pizza, tacos. Well, yeah, you could like anything. You name yeah, it. yeah. Okay. Pork, yeah. anything pork, anything bacon, anything that mixes with pineapple is perfect. Chicken, it goes with anything. I know it. I was just thinking. I was, I was challenging. Them. <laughs> Come on, Brandon. He said it. He's, all. Cook, yeah, he's cooking like bacon in the back there. Don't worry. <laughs> it's no bacon, but you'll see what it is a bit later. <laughs> okay. So this so one now- is pina colada a la citronelle. Uh, so this is uh, really a slushy pina colada with, instead of rum, the citronelle tea and a little bit of spices. Now, would you do the same the stuff if you added rum in there, Pio? Would you oh, do yeah. the same, same same stuff? Yeah, definitely. I would do exactly the same stuff. I would pick the rum, maybe a agricole rum that is more a brandy, that is more a little bit more on the sugar cane, and uh, like a, a different rum that are uh, tasty. Like Malibu? A little bit more. Uh, no, not like Malibu. No, I wouldn't use Malibu because Malibu is, has a lot of, uh, of artificial flavor in it. So what I would use instead is more an agricultural rum that tastes really like like uh, uh, sugar cane and that okay. tastes really li- like the, the ground of the rum and where, where it's made. So this is uh, when you use rum flavor in a pina colada, you already have the coconut and the uh, pineapple flavor. In oh, this, be too so much. I would go with something different to go in another direction and complement this flavor. Now, Pio, is that is that normal for mixologists not to do like a double flavor of the same flavor in a drink? Is that yeah. kind of like a golden rule? Okay. Um, yes, yes. For me, it is anyway. I don't like we have uh, lots of bartenders and mixologists that do things differently. It depends for what. Sometimes it can be a little bit different because the flavor can. Uh, enhance the flavor and make it even stronger. But for me, if I go in a direction with, like for example, in this uh, in this subject, uh, pineapple, I'm not gonna use something else. Oh, to nice and to taste. And then I'm gonna try to find things that complement well with it instead of get or taste bud mixed with what type is it fresh pineapple is it artificial pineapple so yeah definitely it makes sense though it kind of makes sense because you're not you're gonna get because not everything's the same as let's say um like a like a pineapple flavor you're probably going to get different profiles for different products yeah mess stuff up right but at the same time another uh, uh, answer of your question would be uh, we can use the same ingredients that has been transformed differently. And that's going okay. to be totally another taste. For example, if you have tequila in the cocktail, using agave syrup would be interesting. And this is not the same flavor, but it comes from the same plant. And then I think that two, I don't think I know the two flavor would complement well together just because they come from the same plant, but they oh, don't so- taste exactly the same. So you wouldn't do like two tequilas, let's say two different kinds of tequilas. Would that be a no-no? Uh, it's depending. We call this a split base, and that could oh. be done. Yeah, definitely. If you want, for example, you use an añero tequila, but you don't want that taste to be that strong, or you want to reduce the cost. Also, it can be an idea to mix it with half an ounce of this añero tequila and half an ounce of another great hundred percent agave tequila that is not hanero and use half an ounce of each. So you have a little bit of the wood, woody flavor, a little bit of the subtlety from the aging. And also you have the strong taste of agave from the white tequila. Cool. So that would be a split base. You can do that with two different rums. You can do that with rum and tequila also, depending on where you want to go. But uh, if you want to use two tequila that are very different, it's possible too. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, cool. Learned something, Learned new, something new today. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, Cool. That's why so Pio's the rock star. <laughs> All right, what's up, Pio? <laughs> the second cocktail is a uh, twist on the uh, gin, Ramos gin fizz. So uh, what, yeah, I think someone wants this cocktail before it melts. There you go, Priscilla, enjoy it. <laughs> so this is- Priscilla's all over it. She's like, yeah, I'll go do another show there. <laughs> so I'm gonna get all the ingredients in this one. 
And once all the ingredients is there, we're going to need to take a break because this cocktail needs to be shaken for like three minutes. Okay. This is. You want me to do a three minute commercial? Is that what you're telling me, Bill? No, I'm going to, I'm going to shake it a little bit before, a little bit after. But we can do two commercials. Yeah, exactly. That would be a good timing after I mix all the ingredients to take a a little break so I can shake it. Yeah, Brenda, tell us a story. (laughs) (laughs) Story time with Brenda now. Exactly. Yeah. Rocking chair by the fire. Yeah, exactly. Oh. All right. So again, I'm going to use two ounces of the pina colada mix in this one. And then I'm going to use an ounce of the fairly lime juice. So for those of you who doesn't know this. I have that right there. Juice. It's in my fridge. Yeah, it's very nice because you don't need to press lime. And this is one ingredient, only lime. So I use it in all my lime cocktail, like margarita, and uh, also the daiquiri, and this is really good. This with simple syrup bo- goes really well together to make lemonade. I have it right there, Brenda. And guess what? You got me some new product, and I can't use it now. Sugar. Because of the sugar. Yeah. Well, that's not. Still... That's not the lime juice. That's the other product. That's. Oh, the that's the other mix. margarita. Yeah, that's the margarita yeah. stuff, right? But lime, you can totally use. Really? Yeah, the lime oh. juice is just straight lime juice. Hint, hint. There you go. Okay, got it. <laughs> got it. Lime juice in a ball cap. I was going to say two limes in a ball cap. (laughs) Got it. (laughs) Sorry, Pio. Sorry, we'll go back to you. So this one, very light syrup because the pina colada mix is already sweet. So you don't want to add too many sweet sweetener in it but i made a it's not it's more a tea but i had honey in it so you have the honey flavor plus the um, ginger flavor in this one so this is like an, a little sweet tea and i put an ounce of this one so so far i have put an ounce of the honey and ginger f- flavor um uh, tea and then i have put two ounce of pina colada and one ounce of lime juice so, so far this is what we have in this one and after it i'm gonna have a egg white so the egg white what? we use it a lot as a foamer in cocktails this is uh, a good way to create big thick foam in a cocktail so for me uh, i put an egg white in it just this way i use the egg and there you go the egg white directly in the mix this way there you go and this is not something that is uncommon in the cocktail world and we do this a lot in many cocktails. So if you're uh, intolerant or allergic to eggs, it is written on the menu. But as a former, it's a really great ingredient. So can you just use. use like egg whites in a jug to peel? Yeah. Like egg whites come in a jug? Okay. This, this is what we do. But here we use the, the yellow, the yolk, the yak, the yolk. Sorry, the, the, yellow, yak, the, the yak and the yolk? <laughs> I'm so what's getting the name you on this? that. What's the name of the yeah. yolk? Part? Yolk, yeah. you got it. It's yolk. yolk. It's close. It was close, buddy. Oh, yeah, I yep. knew it was something like that. <laughs> so we use this for, uh, for Caesar dressing here. Yeah, so uh, there you go. Okay. So, okay. I have pina colada mix. I have lime juice. I have the uh, syrup, ginger and honey syrup, and then egg white. And finally, I will have three quarter of an ounce of thick cream, 35%. Oh. Cream. Oh. Yeah. So this is a classic cocktail. This is really uh, the one that is called a Ramos Gin Fizz. But now I'm tw- I'm twisting it. I'm making it different with the pina colada in- uh, flavor instead of the gin flavor that we usually use. We usually use, and this one is orange blossom water. So I put just a little bit of this one. Orange blossom water is really powerful. So I put like a couple dash this way. So now I have all the ingredients in it, and now it's going to be soon time for the break because I need to shape this a lot to make it super thick. And after it, I'm going to pour it in the columns with sparkling water, and you'll see the foam coming out of it. This is the classic Ramos gin fizz. This is how we make it, but this one is twist is a twist with the pina colada. So you just tell me when you need the commercial, Pio. So before we go on the commercial, just before you go on the commercial, Brenda, do just yes. wait, 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 wait. Nope. <laughs> nice move. You don't want to wreck that yak in that. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. all right, we'll go to commercial. We'll go. I'll, I'll ask the question to get back. I get it. I'm Here good.
And now you can Hello? ask me your question. <laughs> Those oh, God, frozen tetras with the pina colada mix, they come frozen. Yes. How many in a case? How many in a case? There's 12 in a case. Oh. Yeah. 12 in a case, and they have a two year uh, frozen shelf life. Um, then when you temp them down to fridge temperature on open, they're good for nine months. And then once you open them, 21 days. It's a very, very versatile product. Yeah. Yeah. And in case you haven't heard me say this before, made in Canada by a Canadian company. <laughs> <laughs> it's down the street. Just down the street. Should put that on my hat, That's actually. Made, they should made in that. Canada. Yeah. You should. <laughs> by a Canadian you should. company. Yeah, you exactly. Pio, what's with the glass? <laughs> All right. So this is a column glass that I'm going to be using for the cocktail. Now I'm tired. I've been shaking all this time really intensely. And this is how you make this cocktail. I'm going to put just a little bit of sparkling water right here. Like and not a lot, but an, about an ounce. Did you put about an ounce in there? To start with, about an ounce. And I'm going to put more after. But this is just okay. at the end of it, you need a little bit of bubble to have the foam coming up. And then I have this that I did a dry shake too. So I take up the ice and I shake it without ice for another one minute approximately. So this cocktail was really popular and there was people just shaking it nonstop all night, shaking Ramos tin <laughs> And uh, now it's not it's really like a song, buddy. It's song, song to, uh, to shirt. So, uh, all right, let's go. I'm going to pour it's this cool. nice foamy cocktail. No, I'm waiting on. for like this thing to like, oh, man. There you go. Just this way. Brandon, so we really got to put in the, we got to put in the package next year that we have to actually go there and do this. In person. I, I like that idea. Yeah, Z's watching PO make these is driving me crazy. I know. <laughs> they, they look so good. And then you see it's so thick because of the way I shake it that the foam can come up the cocktail without falling on the side. And this is what looks great. And this is what means that you shake it enough and you made a great uh, Ramos chin fizz. And then, uh, but this one is the pina colada uh, fizz cole cole. This is how I called it. Feast Kole Kole. So Kole Kole <laughs> means like it's awesome. being together. Okay. So in French and Fizz is like, because this is fizzy, creamy Kole Kole. So I have this nice uh, paper straw. I, I think it's important to take an attention of using nice uh, tools and nice straw, nice glassware when you do cocktails. Me, for me, this is what I like. So I go shop for. I was going to say, you must be fun shopping for glasses and straws. Yeah, I love it. Uh, glasses, I go to uh, an antique. Uh, I was going to say, you uh, must go like the, the dollar store, the antique stores. Like the, the thrift stores and things yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They have great coffee mugs once in a while. So there you go. So I put this. Uh, this is a pineapple leaf with my um, paper straw. And then I'm going to use a little bit of cinnamon, uh, grounded cinnamon on the foam. That will have another profile of flavor and that fits well on the nose. Uh, just like that. So there you go. So this is the fizz cole cole. Maybe can Priscilla bring that closer I was to the say, camera? Priscilla, Priscilla, can you bring that closer a little bit so they can see? Let's get a nice zoom in on that. Yeah. Let's get a zoom. <sighs> the, her hands. <laughs> Priscilla, oh, that can is be a, a hand cool. Model. Look at that straw. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah. And the foam straight up, not spilling over the side. That's beautiful. Yeah, yeah because I shake it a lot and the I egg whites and the cream all together. And using also the way I use the sparkling water a little bit at the bottom. So it lifts up all the foam and then I put a little bit more. So this is the only way to do that. If not, it's always going to fall. Even if it's creamy, even if it's thick, it's always going to fall. If you do the steps properly and you take good care of doing it well, it's going to make that uh, that um, result, and this result is sixteen dollars. I think what? I think you should go in. What? I think what? you should go what? teach in uh, high school science classes, PO. Like if you go into a high school science That'd class, be huge. teaching about like, the be chemistry huge of the yeah, like absolutely of cocktails and the flavors and the, the the gases from the carbonated beverage being in the bottom, pushing everything up. Like I would I would have gone to science class if that's what we were talking. about. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> We're making cocktails today in science class. <laughs> I haven't seen yeah, this I kid teach. in three years. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. I For teach sure. to uh, like 30 kids every month here at the Bay Love Bar School. So I, 
uh, kids. I say kids, it's 18 to 25, 30 max, but uh, mostly 18 to 22. And they come here for the bartending class. And I love it. It's really fun. And I learned a lot from them too. But for me, uh, bartending, uh, this is my craft, but I'm still, there's so many things to learn like all the time. And sometimes I have chefs who come take the class. So we have discussion, uh, pastry chef, and they help me to do different stuff. So it's really, um, a craft of sharing and this is what i enjoyed it as well so very PL, collaborative it, yeah uh, pl i got some history here on you is this true that you've created more than 200 events in eight canadian cities four mexican cities four spanish cities do do you sleep yeah this is uh, back uh, before covid i was doing all these uh, before i had two kids because uh, <laughs> it wasn't working for me. But anymore, I'm focusing. I started what? at school just 45 minutes from house, from my house, and now it's more focused on this one. I do one big festival in Bath, uh, but uh, everything that was going on in Spain and Mexico, that we, well, we had a good time. We had a great time. For sure. that, was, that was a lot of fun. But uh, yeah, we did uh, more than 200, more like 300 events. Uh, and every year what? it was uh, 20 events in Canada. And also in Spain, that was four cities that we done for two years, and uh, Mexico, yeah, a lot of fun. And the place. So it, it must it must be there. hard. It must not be hard to get people out to come into your classes and see this stuff. This stuff's crazy. Like everyone wants to be a mixologist, right? Everyone wants to be make that perfect drink. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a lot of fun. So what, so what what's up next? All right, the last one is a another twist cocktail on the Mai Tai. <laughs> So there is, um, this is an orange syrup. So orange syrup is almond flavor. So orange syrup here. And I also, I'm using this uh, chai tea, strong tea. So you, you, I think for now you have noticed that during this show, we're not using alcohol. So I'm using a lot of infusion. For me, this is the way to go. Some people will use um, like non-alcoholic distillate. This is another option, but these are very expensive. And for me, they're not that much more flavorful. They are clear though. And, uh, but for me, using infusion is fine. What they do sometimes is they distill this in the, in the distillation process. There's no alcohol. So there's no alcohol at the end of distillate, distillating either, but it's clear. They bottle it and they sell it $35. So this is another way of using infusions for me i'm just using tea or different infusion with flavor this is what i use and i think it's uh, it does the trick pretty well so here i have chai tea strong infusion infusion here i have the um uh, orja syrup which is a classic syrup that we use in tiki culture cocktail like uh, mai tai for example so this cocktail is a little bit of a twist on the mai tai and then i have orange Angostura bitter, which is an alcoholic infusion, but I'm just going to use a little bit. And it is not an alcoholic. This is not a spirit. We use it. It's sold in, in grocery it's a, stores. It's a bitter. I have that in my fridge. Exactly. So this is a bitter. Should so I put it in the fridge or cupboard? Fridge or cupboard? No, not, no need to put it in the fridge. No, it's, uh, it's okay to put it on the counter. This is 45% uh, of alcohol, but it is not sold in liquor store because this is not... Um, drinkable this is to fl to flavor you put just a little drop it's like uh, vanilla essence for example there's now alcohol in it but you don't put like an ounce in <laughs> now it. you tell me <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you can do a shot of this if you want but you have no no like no no before. Yeah, <laughs> exactly way too strong and then then the <laughs> orange juice fairly and the lime juice so this is the ingredients i'm going to be using in this one and Holy wait cow. for it this one is really interesting because like First of all, the, the tea. So I'm going to put an ounce and a half of this chai tea. So chai is, again, cinnamon, cardamom, star anise. So this is the flavor we found in this that works well with the uh, the other flavor that we're going to be using. So the chai tea. Then the orange syrup with almond. So this is orange syrup. I'm going to put a full ounce of this beautiful, very tasty, with a good smell, and a nice thick texture or just syrup. This is sold in the specialized uh, cocktail store or uh, some grocery store, but not all of them. It's a bit hard to find, but on the on the internet, you can find it. Then I'm gonna put an ounce of the lime juice. Again, the Mai Tai, there is lime juice in it. So that's a twist on it. So an ounce of lime juice. And finally, an ounce of orange juice, just to balance all these flavor with a balanced juice. So this one is acid, 
acidity, acidity yet uh, sweet. So it's just going to round it up together. So just an ounce of orange juice. Now that I have my chai tea, lime juice, orja, and orange juice all together, I'm going to bring my nice glassware because this is a tiki culture cocktail. So we use like fun glassware like this one. I don't know if you can see it. This one yes. has a nice, <laughs> cool shape. Again, you can find this on the uh, on the internet. And I'm going to give this a little shake. Oh, oh, okay. Commercial. That's the that's the cue, right? No, actually, no, this is Lee. It was more for. I got my, a little song uh, commercial. We can go if you want. Okay, here we go. You start shaking. I'll go. In God's name. I was gonna be like, Pio, it's okay. You don't need to do that. You don't need to beat the poor person. What are you doing? Sorry. Uh, I've never seen that before. I've never seen. What are you this doing? This is a bag. So these bags are made to make crushed ice. Uh, usually we make it before service because it's what? really noisy. I use the machete here. And oh, my Lord. Hit on it to make crushed ice. So that's how I'm doing it. And that's going to look really nice on the cocktail. And that's this type of ice. We'll bring a lot of dilution and we'll, we'll bring also decoration like uh, it looks a little bit like snow. So it is, is great. It looks nice. So I'm going to dirty pour the mix that I have shaken here and leave it in a little place. And then here is the surprise I've been doing for you. So these are um, uh, caramelized pineapple that I have put in it. Wow. Star anise, cinnamon and also vanilla uh, stick and a little bit of sugar, orange mm. peel in it. So the smell at the school today is just amazing. It smells so good. And I don't know if you can see well, what I'm going to do now is just using a little bit of this magical product, which is overproof rum. So the overproof rum, what's going to do is it's going to burn just like that. Shut there up. you go. So burning this will bring all the beautiful charted caramel that we are that we want for this like pio dude garnish. you're a different level you're a different <laughs> level brenda he's a different level of mixology yeah, so. like seriously I you're a different it. level you better get well, that belt that's... for him next next time <laughs> yeah. let's, let's crown him let's get a crown like holy cow okay so the next step is to use the crushed ice and these as a garnish trying to is that a bag that you just buy PO or is that a special bag? No, it's a special bag. It's a bag that doesn't leave uh, fabrics on the ice. So this is what is uh, this is mm. why it's a, it's a great bag to use for for this. So this I'm gonna put it here, and then I'm gonna use my shaker here to get some crushed ice and garnish this way, just like that. So this is gonna make a beautiful cocktail beautiful garnish just like that with a lot this is what looks nice bring more garnish a little bit of lime here why not so there is lime in the cocktail we want lime as a garnish and again the paper straw just this way in the middle boom so that is how we're going to do that we could use a little bit more of the spices that are there it's still burning there you go so these are delicious. And you can also put it in the magic bullet and make another like uh, puree, uh, charted caramelized uh, pineapple puree. That's what we're going to do with it later. So there you go. So this is the twist on the Mai Dai using the uh, fairly orange juice and lime juice and the perfect summer cocktail. That is spectacular. That's absolutely spectacular. Different level. Hey, You're a different hey. level. Jay, can I talk to you about the lime juice for a second? Sure. Yeah. 
So, so PO talks all the time about, about our P, uh, about our lime juice, the fairly lime juice and uh, being a staple behind the bar, but it's also staple in the kitchen as well. And I did some little quick uh, digging on some pricing and stuff today, which was kind of cool. The lime juice itself is just pure lime. There's nothing else in that bottle. It's just approximately 28 limes squeezed into the bottle. We freeze it. Oh, flash I, I think I know where you're it. going here. Yeah. Uh, so that you have not only one taste profile, because we all know with uh, any kind of produce crop, the flavor changes throughout the course of the year. So this is sure. capturing one flavor profile and one price point, right? So if you only have 28 limes in this bottle of um, not from concentrate lime juice, it works out to be about the cost of about 20 cents a lime of juice, right? And the current market cost on limes right now is about 74 cents a lime. Oh, yeah. That's I've seen them. I was going to say about a buck. Yes. And, and I've seen it like from $18 a case all the way up to $140 yep. a case. And that's not including the labor um, aspect wow. of somebody actually cutting and squeezing kidding? lime juice for the lime juice. So it's about 20 cents versus 74 cents a lime. And I don't know a single restaurant operator in Canada that doesn't want to be more efficient, doesn't uh, want to maximize the time of their, their labor force because oh. there's so little of it and wants to save money. And with the fairly lime juice, like Pio said, it's be beyond a yeah. staple behind the bar, but also in the kitchen in with the sauces kitchen. and marinades and everything else, um, right. salsas and all of that stuff. Um, a fantastic product, like absolutely fantastic so you're, what you're saying, what you're saying there, Brenda, then every restaurant in Canada should have, should better have, better have, <laughs> better have the fairly, fairly exactly. not from concentrate lime juice. Like, why wouldn't you? Look, exactly. I even have one. I'm not even behind the bar and I have yeah. one right here. You just drink that all day, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you found a, found a bottle a day. <laughs> Down a bottle a day. Oh. Look at that wow. cocktail, like still sitting there and still looking gorgeous. I know. Priscilla's yeah, like, can I have enough? The have Angostura enough? bitter on it. So Priscilla just remind me, this is the Angostura bitter that we uh, we talked about a little bit earlier. Right. I put a couple of dashes right on the top of the um, of the the ice, so it's all gonna soak in the ice, and this gonna bring uh, another le level of nose. And the spices that are there are very similar to the spices that I have put in the uh, in the uh, pineapple. In the pineapple. Ice, pineapple. Yeah. No, no way. Can Priscilla no, no bring that one closer? Yeah, Priscilla, can you show this uh, to the camera, please? I want to see the chunks of ice. Yeah, after you beat them on the... Yeah. Wow. I see the difference. I really do. Yeah. yeah. Pretty now, cool. Can you imagine serving that in a restaurant and, you know, you see it at the table beside you. Tell me that the table beside... Oh, and the cinnamon stick. Very good. <laughs> you see it at the table beside you. You're for sure going to, you know, increase your sales that way because the next yeah. table is going to say, I want one of those. Yeah, and this one I have put, uh, Pris I have put uh, Priscilla, three. the hands go away with another drink. Thank God they're mocktails, eh? Yeah. yeah you could replace the uh, chai tea by rum. Uh, <laughs> Again, this is a rum. Uh, this is a rum cocktail. Yeah. Very Perfect. cool. That is, is that it for today, Peel? Is that it for yeah. today? I have yeah, a question for right. you. I have a. I don't know if I've ever asked you this. What's your favorite drink? What's a drink you Ooh. drink? You're like, what's my drink? That's a what's your question. favorite drink? I oh. like I like the the bitterness of uh, the Campari, so uh, okay. like using for example not necessarily the Negroni which is really strong, but mm -hmm. uh, using Campari in uh, different uh, like um, for sours for examples or making fruity cocktail and using a little bit of uh, bitter liquor aperitivo not not only Campari but any bitter liquor is uh, something that I really like. I know you, you really? for example the the spritz which is very popular right now. This is, there is different twists on the spritz that are uh, a lot of fun uh, to work with. For example, using uh, suro liquor, uh, liquor of elderflower, instead of using Aperol, of uh, using Campari instead of using Aperol, we bring totally another flavor. So you still put Prosecco and sparkling water, but the liquor can change. And that is uh, one of the cocktails I really enjoy. And uh, mocktails. I now I'm drinking a lot of mocktails uh, these days. Working with you and also for my. I got you converted, and, eh, buddy? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I, I, honestly, I really like it. I think it's super interesting to use uh, infusion. Like the way I talk about it, I think it shows. And um, for me, it's um, I wouldn't say a, a passion, but uh, I, I've got really interested in 
go extract flavors in different way and how to use this flavor instead of spirits and instead of distilled non-alcoholic spirit. I made also great cocktails with non-alcoholic beer uh, using like spicy uh, syrup and um, lemon and then I top it with non-alcoholic beer. This is really different, really tasty, and you can use a lot of different beers, non-alcoholic now. There's a great offer on the market. So for me, in cocktails, this is a world that is new and that is super inspiring. Well, you know, the cool part is I find with non-alcohol drinks, mocktails, is the price doesn't change. <laughs> exactly. It's a major margin maker for, for end yes. user operators, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, and then the presentation and the and like what well, like what PO is doing right now, you pay extra for that because it's not just a virgin pina colada. It's not just a oh. you know um, virgin Caesar. It's that's not what that's not what the mocktail market is yeah. about anymore. It's a it's a yeah. culinary um, next level of mixology that is the largest growth component in bread beverage right now is the mocktail it's market. Huge. I know. So and grow and just growing like mm. absolutely. Hugely. The projections are massive. So absolutely awesome. Well, thank you both. Yeah. First of all, like it's been awesome. And PO, thank you so much for crushing it once again and uh, showing us stuff. Even with a machete. Even, even with, a machete, with a machete. machete. <laughs> and your yolk. And your yolk. <laughs> your yak. Your yak. I don't even yolk. remember what it is. You tell the wrong <laughs> word so many times now. I don't know. It's yak. <laughs> yak or yolk? Yolk. 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 It's yolk. Yolk. <laughs> Yak is the animal, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. Just yeah, think of the okay. word joke and add the Y. Yeah, exactly. Think of the word joke and add the Y. Yoke. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Awesome. Thank well, you, Brenda. thank you both. And thank you, Fairly. Lasan, you guys rock. Um, and also, Brenda, if people want to learn out yeah. more about stuff you have, you can go to lasanfoodservice.ca and find recipes and all these amazing products you guys carry. Absolutely. All Canadian. All Canadian, all made in Canada, based out of Rougemont, Quebec, for over a hundred years. For a hundred years, over look good for years. you. You look good for your age, Brenda. I know, right? <laughs> it's right. the hat. It's the hat. Exactly. Yeah, and you and you're and you're pure, and you're having uh, lime juice every day too. It helps. And yes, yes, this is like a lime <laughs> juice detox every day. <laughs> exactly. Awesome. awesome. Well, thank Thanks you, thank so you much, both, Eva, actually, and uh, we'll talk later. We'll see you guys later. Sounds good. Cheerio. Ciao. Bye. Bye. Bye.